Torah TV. The world is thinking. But when it comes to decision making, metacognition allows you to do a few things that are very, very important to making good decisions. The first thing is avoiding unnecessary mistakes. So at this point, psychologists come up with a long list of biases and heuristics and, and, and flaws that have been built into the brain. To take but one very simple example, something called loss aversion. It's a very simple bias to demonstrate. It was first discovered by Dan, Danny Kahneman and Amos Fersky back at Hebrew University in the early 70s. Um, and, and you know, I can show loss aversion. So I'm going to make you guys a bet. I'm going to flip a coin. And if it's heads, you pay me a dollar. If it's tails, how much do I have to pay you before you'll accept the bet? So if I offer you a dollar and ten cents, who would accept that bet? So we got a few rational souls here. Um, you know, I, I, I saw the same people who would, who would have pushed the man off the footbridge. Uh, um, but, but, so, you know, an economist would say you should take that bet, because over the long term that bet's going to pay off. Most people say, $1.10, are you crazy? I have $1.25, people still say no, $1.50, you get a few more hands. It turns out that for most people all across the world, you have to offer them at about $1.75 or $2 before they'll accept a dollar bet on the flip of a coin. And, and the way we explain this behavior, the way Tversky and Kahneman did, is that losses hurt more than gains feel good. That if we were perfectly rational, we would treat losses and gains equivalently. But that's not the way we're built at all. And this isn't just about stupid coin flips. This is true across all sorts of human interactions. It's why, you know, for every critical thing you say to your spouse, so you have to say five nice things to make up for it. Um, you know, I know as a writer you get a nice review and it makes you happy for about 30 seconds. You get a nasty review, it ruins your month. Um, we're, we're very sensitive to losses, to criticism. It's part of a larger category called negativity bias. But, but loss aversion actually is very real, everyday practical consequences. So one of my favorite studies is the my Terry Odin at UC Berkeley, who looked at how people make decisions of which stocks to buy or sell. You, know, you get your stock portfolio every month and you're trying to figure out, should I keep Google or sell it? Should I you know, keep GM or sell it? Hopefully you sold GM. Um, <laughs> and and you know, it's, a, it, it, it's a tough decision. So how do people make this decision? Well, it turns out that people are much more likely to sell stocks that have gone up in value. Right? They're, they're, they, you know, if, if, if Google's done well, you're much more likely to sell it than a stock which has actually gone down in value. And the reason seems to be is that stocks that have gone down in value trigger loss aversion. That if we sold that stock, we would make the loss tangible. That's such a terrible feeling to actually make, take a loss on a stock you've invested in that we try to postpone the loss for as long as possible. The unfortunate result, though, is that we end up incurring more losses because we're stuck with a stock portfolio composed entirely of losing shares because we've sold all our winners. <laughs> this is why, according to Odeon, the stocks people sell outperform the stocks they keep by about 3.5% every year, which compounded over the lifetime of retirement savings account is actually a pretty big deal. And all gets back to loss aversion. So what does metacognition allow you to do? Well, next time you buy and sell stocks, you know, you've learned about loss aversion, you, it's important to think, well, why am I making this decision? Is it because I should actually sell the stock? Because I've got a good reason to sell it? Because because my unconscious has, has done the computations and knows this is actually a good thing to get rid of, or you're simply falling victim to loss aversion. Unless you know about loss aversion, unless you're self-aware, you're going to make the same mistake that people have been making forever. You're going to sell stocks that are going up in value, and you're going to fall victim to all the usual biases and irrational ticks that have simply been built into our brain.